Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. This is a show where we aim to educate, inspire and entertain through real life stories and interviews from people in the Scottish property community. As always, thanks for listening and give us a follow on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to join us at our monthly networking events on the first Wednesday of every month. Tickets are available on our website. So without further ado, we'll just cut straight into this week's podcast. Welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast, Scott McCall. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks very much for asking me. I'm pleased well, to be here. What I'm saying, us, it's just myself, no Nick today. So Man down. Man down today, man down. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm excited for you to join us, mate. I get some fantastic chats with you on our, uh, this is what I've called, like, so many different things from business, mindset, life, the fact that a father of daughters, and a, and a ramping up the portfolio and, and your property investment portfolio so aye let's say let's take us back to the start man talk to us about about your background where you grew up and aye let's, let's lead into property then sure aye um so i guess uh earlier years just usual kind of stuff are, are a lot of things that i hear of some of the people on the podcast through school probably wasn't that academic uh just didn't apply myself as been honest it was always kind of interest in doing stuff outdoors so yeah from I was very young just gardens milk rounds paper rounds all the normal stuff I was always kind of driven by earning some money okay. almost like the idea of earning money and then buying stuff with it so um yeah kind of that was my early days yeah milk rounds and stuff and then doing gardens I've always done my dad done gardens his father done gardens his my great grandfather done gardens so I've actually worked in some of the gardens my great grandfather set out so mm in his day he would be a professional gardener so landscaping is our main business mm -hmm. and that is probably when we first started the business our slogan was rooted in quality right because i have a lot of history H with, with within gardening and that mm -hmm. kind of industry so yeah just so, uh, so was that straight from school into a family business like working with your dad or was your, your no it was just uh, so i went i left school went to work in horticulture with plants right. so just a local uh, nursery based mm -hmm. um, i live out in a wee village called calern just north of glasgow mm -hmm. so uh, working at a garden center there worked there for a couple of years didn't really have any direction of what i was going to do i just um yeah i just quite enjoyed the job it was local mm -hmm. and that was really that, that was the main reasons started working in horticulture quite liked it because i was into gardening and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff and then i left it went into work as a fitters mate engineering uh, pipe work stuff mm -hmm. uh, done that for a while went back to horticulture again worked away there and then that was i was probably kind of early 20s and then i started to think well what's what am i going to do here am i going to actually pursue horticulture i realized the salary wasn't great so I went back to engineering, went to college, done construction management, and uh, worked as a project engineer, sprinkler systems fitting, right. sprinkler systems for B&Q, Tesco, John Dewar's, all, all these kind of folk through a business in Cumbernauld. That was mm -hmm. a family relation. It was my ex-brother-in-law's father's company. Mm -hmm. So worked away in that for a while and just didn't really enjoy it. I thought I wanted to go and try the academic thing, see if I could do it, prove it to myself yeah, yeah. that I wasn't that daft. <laughs> you weren't and it, and it, <laughs> it was actually my application at school. So I went and done it, quite enjoyed it. Eh, sorry, went and done it, realised it wasn't really for mm -hmm. me, sitting in an office all day, I guess talking about doing a lot of stuff, but not a lot of stuff happening. And on the sidelines, I was always doing gardens. I yeah. was always doing homers. I was leaving work home shirt and tie off denim's on go and pick three or four guys up head away into bear's den where lights on in the transit at 10 at night cutting slabs the <laughs> neighbors out complaining what he's doing and we're saying we just need to get this job finished so because <laughs> we've got one in the morning <laughs> we we're always just keen to get going and uh, i met lauren my wife when i first started working as an engine as a project engineer mm -hmm. and that was about four years i worked there and then lauren and i had a, a few chats and Lauren said, listen, you either need to stop the homers or focus on your work. Yeah. Because she said, you come home most nights, go out and work. You're burning the candle then, every day. And then you're working a Saturday, Sunday. Mm. The Lauren was at uni and she was working part-time at the local distillery and a pub. So she was quite busy. So it was okay in a, on, you know, on some level, but we weren't getting a lot of time together. Yeah. And the more I looked at it, the business I was in, the engineering, it was going through a transition where the main guy who started it was retiring, mm -hmm. the sons would take over. And if I'm being honest, 
I just did, I wasn't that confident that it was a place for me. Yeah. When he left, I had a lot of respect for him. He built the business up mm. from nothing. And I wouldn't say that same respect lay between me and the people who would yeah. be taking it over. That's just been been honest mm. about it. So I decided to take the jump and, and start going into landscaping. Um I bought a I bought a small digger and a dumper. And it, it was really just taking that transition from doing so many homers mm -hmm. to actually saying, do you know what? Okay, let's go for it. Let's just mm -hmm. look, make this into a business. And I think like anything in life, some of the family were a wee bit cautious about it. Others were quite happy for me to try it. That industry landscaping is a real low barrier for entry. Yeah. If you've got a transit van and, and a wheelbarrow, and a shovel, aye. That's you, you're a yeah. landscape gardener. So what made you go for the investment in the business? Like to buy a tick a, a digger and a dumper like straight off the off? Was that to level yourself up a bit away from I suppose the entry level, like right, we're going to persist yourself a little bit more? Well, probably just to try and get a wee bit more established. But I think during my earlier working life, so I worked in farms as well when I was younger and I hurt my back just working too hard. Right. Guys giving you stuff that's too heavy to lift and had prolapse discs. So my taking the machines always and still is to this day with the men that use them is if the machine blows a hose i'll buy a new hose yeah. if i blow my back out can place your back or i'm out for uh, months yeah. and the same with the men that work with us i don't i say to the guys often let's work smarter mm -hmm. not harder yeah and it's getting the right kit about us we could go and tender for jobs that guys wouldn't use a machine and we're happily we would happily tender for the project mm -hmm. they would see it as an absolute mission and we'd go in and do what they were doing five days in a day. Yeah. Because we had the right kit. Mm -hmm. And it was, what was it? It was about I, 17, 18 years ago. So I don't know because I wasn't involved in the industry. These machines were obviously available. Mm -hmm. But when I bought one, it seemed quite niche. Now, they're everywhere now. But it definitely seemed quite niche because I had a couple of contractors contact me and say, listen, could you come in and dig out our jobs? Because we've not got machines. We've not got mm -hmm. machines like that. Yeah. We've, you know, these restricted, they'll go through a gate. Mm -hmm. so so we just we get set up with the business start started working on that just me and a guy we, we established in 2007 just right before the recession Oof. so it was a real slog it was yeah, like a, a real slog of struggle from 2008 to what all 11 12 13 aye, before it starts really you money know, came back in people's pockets yeah and some of the mm -hmm. guys that were subbing us in to use us for machine work they were established you know, in early 80s yeah so they were saying to me oh remember these days and I would say, I, I know nothing of them. Uh, I just thought, so So probably, I wouldn't change it, because probably in hindsight, the first four or five years were, were tough. It made you. I, it almost it, made it the business. It really did. We yeah. just ground it out. And people would say to me, you know, landscaping saturated. Everyone's doing it. And my pers my take on it was, there's always room for someone else not to be busy. Aye. But it's not going to be me. Yes. And, I, the quality. and I'll just, I'll outwork the competition. Yeah. And that's really what, that was really what we done for it was me and it was my older cousin chris at the time came to work with us and then what was the target market then for the landscape business was it just private private uh, it was private work it was it's, it was always private mm -hmm. of late we've done a wee bit of commercial which is okay mm -hmm. payment terms Paying structures that. of the business is, is pretty challenging and yeah so it's always been it's always been private and then quite quickly we we're, we're trying to target kind of I guess it's a bit of a cliche, high-end private. If people are spending, you know, tens of thousands on their garden, I wouldn't say it's a low entry item. Yes. Aye. Most of the people you're dealing with, they have dispensable income, mm -hmm. they have savings. You know, this is something that, you know, you're not really doing your garden up if you're not paying your bills. Aye, aye. You know, so it was really setting up within a kind of 30 mile radius of where we were mm. based. And then just just building the business. So yeah, it was me and Chris, and then me and a guy, and then Alan Moore came on board. Alan's actually still with us, so he's been with us kind of sixteen and a bit years. Mm -hmm. But um, we just built the business steadily. Although it was quite slow, it was two up, three down. Uh, you know, were you quite on the tools or on the on the on the site a lot on to start with? Hundred percent, uh, all the time. So I was probably on the tools consistently for we're seventeen years. We've been mm -hmm. running, I would say maybe eleven years. I was in the tools. Do you think the project? Engineering spell gave you a bit of an inclination and it's kind of almost managed the projects and step back a little bit. That there was a, there's an option to do that. 
Oh, it definitely mm-hmm. did. Uh, procurement was a big thing right. with project management, was just sourcing kit. You know, and I know everyone just picks up the phone to the local merchant and orders everything, but there's a whole avenue of suppliers yeah, yeah. out there. And, and I'm not one for battering folk off 10 mm-hmm. times to get a quid off it. No. But the procurement thing was big and the project management and actually how the things went together. Yeah. You know, doing good practice and trying to do good quality work. And, mm-hmm. and I'm... Uh, I always want to do a good job. So I think putting that across to the client and, and I'm only human, I'm only a human. So things didn't always go to plan, mm. but if there was problems, we would always see we rectified them, yeah, yeah. you know, and I always had a lot of faith saying, I don't think there's a client we couldn't go back to. I'm not saying that everything went smoothly to uh, plan, yeah. but we would never bow out and we've never yeah. bowed out a job, mm. you know, and there's some clients that we've worked for that have put me through the mill at times, uh, but we really do just try and knuckle down and get through it. Mm-hmm. We've had some architects saying I would have bowed out that a while ago. But then you're like, well, what, you know, I just don't see that as an option a lot no. of the time. I yeah. like to... You commit to the job, you're going to see it through until it's yeah, done. Uh, yeah, and I suppose I do like walking uphill as well. I do like... Yeah. I like the business. I like the structure of business. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's just... It was trying to build our mm-hmm. reputation. It was trying to get ourselves known for good quality work and then if we could get ourselves to that stage then the cost mm. structure would be set with that and then we maybe wouldn't be competing with with everyone yeah yeah so i give the give the listeners a little bit of a an insight into what the business looks like now then what's you know you've got a lot of guys working for you yeah um so where we are just now so we've we bought a, a, a new yard there so just a uh, june last year so it's 24 acres it's a fishery but it, it was really the land we were homing mm-hmm. in on. So the business today is is our yard, kind of 24 acres. It's got a house on it that we'll talk about as well. And uh, we've got a grab lorry in the road now, 32-tonne mm-hmm. grab. We've got kind of 26 men full-time, nice. five people in the office. And then I, we've got a wealth, you know, we've got, what have we got, seven or eight diggers, six dumpers, 10 vans, four pickups, HGV. It's a serious operation, isn't it? It's, uh, and you're, st- uh, you, you're, st- you run it solely. You're the CEO, you're the director. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so I'm the main owner. We've got two guys in the office that work closely with us, Alan. Yeah. Alan's been with us 10 years. There's the, the other Alan that I mentioned earlier, he's the guy, he spears up the grab lorry. Nice. That's something we just started a year ago. Mm-hmm. We paid a lot of money to bring that service into the business mm-hmm. and it was, a, it was an ongoing cost. So it was always our goal to try and bring that facility within the company. Although it's a, it's a hard market to run in, the margins are small. Yeah. The kit's really expensive. You know, mm-hmm. I, we were just shy a quarter of a million pound for the lorry, you know, and it does like five mile a gallon when it's loaded. <laughs> and if you're a tenner cheaper than our guy, you're not getting to work. Uh, and it, it's, 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 as, as, it's as tight as that. Uh, so again, what we're trying to do with, with it, it's Matt Grab as a business, but what we're trying to do with that is get ourselves a good reputation and then get some loyal, uh, loyal client base yeah. that we say, listen, if you guys need us, we'll give you the best service. Mm-hmm. But we're not doing it if you're going to go somewhere else for a tenner. Aye, aye. We just can't, you, you can't get the best service at the lowest cost. They just don't align. Yeah. So, uh, yes, so we've got the fishery now. Lauren, my wife's in the business as well. And yeah, I, it's been, uh, I probably don't do much reflection in the business. So Lauren will always say, you know, do you not realise how far you've come? And yeah. I say, well, we're just, uh, we're on to the next thing. You know, so when do we you pop- find that you just, I suppose you'll just model through day to day, solving the problems and not really look at, taking, taking the time to reflect and look back? I do. I yeah. I don't think, I think complacency is lethal as well. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always striving to get up. I think it's that way in in, a, in any business. They say us that you know eighty percent of the time you're worried about the future. Sometimes you're a bit worried about what's happened, and there's only like a minuscule percentage that you actually sit back and think, "I'm quite content." And mm-hmm. I, I do feel, I do feel I'm content in the business, but I'm always, I always want to try and grow and grow and push. develop and it's not that i'm not i'm very thankful and grateful for where we are mm. as a company and for the team that's round yeah. about us some of the guys in the business are incredibly skilled and and i can lean on them and and having that um i guess from the early days in the business working on the tools pricing mm. jobs at night organizing all the materials at night by email and then actually going into a, an operation where you have other people that you can lean on Self-employment is a very lonely place. Yeah. So for the first 10 years of the business, it was just me. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and it really was. Lauren would listen to me. But just be a soundboard. But she, she's a, she, she's qualified as a primary teacher. Yeah, yeah. So, and as much as I really value her opinion, I was the guy doing the work all day, every day. I was out in the pouring rain. I was dealing with the clients. Yeah. I was meeting the accountant, doing the invoicing, getting the insurance. Everything was left to me. So it was really refreshing when I got involved with the guys in the office. And Aye. that was more of a... What, what was the ingredient? Board. What was the kind of success, the key ingredients? And in, I suppose to, to scale that over the last like seven years then from going yourself to having this massive team. Uh, yes. So I guess we had, we had real kind of a reasonably consistent growth, you know, probably from like, what would be like 2014, probably to like maybe 2000. 18, 19, we capped out with about 38 people at one point right. and it was just, it was a bit much, it was just, we were almost running to stand still at times, mm -hmm. overheads were quite high. Uh, when I mentioned earlier about contractors would hire us in, there was, so the, the business is called McCollin Stokes, the Stokes part is PD Stokes, is Paul Stokes, so Paul's a very well-known landscape contractor in Central Scotland. Mm -hmm. Paul done the Glasgow Garden Festival, which was nineteen eighty eight. I went to the primary school <laughs> and he had set a garden up. So Paul and I struck off a really good relationship mm -hmm. where he would bring us in to do work for him. Excavator work, groundwork, and a lot of timber work. He wasn't as good with timber. Mm -hmm. Alan that's been with the business seventeen years and now uh, you know is now at the front of Matt Grab. He's a joiner to trade. Mm -hmm. So Alan and I could take care of all the timber work. Paul and I worked together. Paul's 62 or 63 now. So Paul was at a point in his career where he was looking to try and back off. Mm -hmm. So he approached me. Paul had about six guys. We had about maybe 10. But Paul had a reputation. Yeah. You know, we, he was our main com competition. We were pricing against him a lot. You know, and we would price a job cheaper than him. We could do it sooner than, than he could. And the clients would say... Hey, we're just going to wait for Mr. Stokes. Oh. And I, my mind's blown. I'm like, yeah, we'll, do, we'll do a good job. Aye. But he just built this the reputation, reputation up there, that yeah. you, you couldn't get by him. So, or very rarely, you could be cost-driven. If yeah. you've got a client that was cost-driven, you could get by him. So Paul approached me and said, would you be interested in getting into business together? Initially, I agreed to it with two or three meetings. And I was actually going to his office with my books to go over all the financials, agree the split. And I'd talked to Lauren before I went and I'd said, you know what, I just don't think, I just got a gut feeling that I just don't think I can do it. So I went to meet him and I just, when as soon as I arrived, I said, listen, Paul, the, the meeting's not what we've agreed. I, I just can't go through with the partnership. And you know, it's testament to the kind of guy he is. He just said, that's totally fine, Scott. I understand. I ran my own business. I totally get it. And we just carried on. I would sub in to do right. his work. Two or three years later, he came back to me again. What do you think? I, I, I just said, no, nah, it's not for me. And then, what do you think that was? It was your baby that you had built, and you didn't really, I, I just, really want to rock the boat too much. Yeah, or? Paul was Paul was more established than we mm. were. Although we had more men, he had he had a more efficient operating system as well. And I just felt I didn't want to answer to anyone. Yeah, I just didn't want to. I had I had put in a a ton of work mm. over some over a really difficult spell in the economy, and I just didn't want to get. I guess I feel as if I'd have been the num I'd been number two. Yeah, and yeah. I just wasn't prepared to do that. No, for the work I'd put in, mm. and Paul wouldn't have seen it like that. He would have just seen it as we're level pegging. You'd be level partners, are yeah, because he's he's a good guy and that's his nature. But he came to me. It would maybe be about four or five years ago, and said he had brought someone else into his business, and he this other person was working within the company to build up equity, mm -hmm. to then take an equity share, run it, and let Paul start to diminish his days. That didn't work out, and Paul came to me and said, "How do you feel about buying me out, and I'll work for you?" And I said, "You know what? That's more what I would be interested in." Mm -hmm. So we organised that deal, and uh, I think at the time we took over, we had twelve. Paul had about six. Mm -hmm. Paul was based at Dobies in Mulgay, which is just our stomping ground. So we came together, worked well in the business, just Paul and I, and then Alan came into the office. Alan, at works was actually. He came to work for, with us just after he left school. So uh, Alan had a bad act, bad climbing accident. He's the highest recorded fall in Corsica. I think it was 55 metres he yeah. fell, free climbing. Him Jesus. and his pal, just young boys, Jeez. away they go. His pal dislodged a rock and it hit Alan in the head. Knocked him off. Knocked him off and then he got airlifted. He was in intensive care, lost pints of blood. Right. His dad phoned me to say he's been in an accident and asked if he was okay and when he said he was. I knew, I knew he'd be back just because his mindset. Mm -hmm. He's Alan's good pals with Julian. 
Right, yeah. And Alan, he's one of those guys that's got this bulletproof mindset that mm. as soon as I knew he was all right, he'd be back. So Alan came back to work. He actually arrived back a job in the south side. His mum dropped him off. He'd walking sticks. And he came into the garden and walking sticks to get up into an excavator to get on with the work. So where do you see that kind nah, of commitment? You don't see that very often at you all. Just, the other you, people you keep a hold of. Yeah. So Alan's uh, down in the business in the office and he'll build up equity and we'll get mm. a directorship organised for that's him in nice. the coming years. Yeah. And that's critical because... How would you, how, how you recognise the talent and the, 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 I suppose, the attributes of people like that to make sure that you can uh, treat them right and make sure that they're getting something out to stay loyal yeah. and stay with you? I don't, that's a that's a tricky question. I I guess so. Alan that works in the lorry, Alan has equity in that as well. He's been with us for years. I guess it's there's these key players in the business mm. that. So we have we have a reasonable turnover in staff, not massive, but we do have people coming and saying, mm. you know, we're we're going. I relate that to football. So transfer windy, strikers going, new manager in. That's just part of the deal. We can't keep everyone we've yeah. got for life. We need new blood in the business. But I say to some of the guys in the office, if someone comes to me and says I'm leaving, I, my response should be, this is going to make my life hell. And if it doesn't make my life hell, let them go. Let them go. Mm -hmm. And there's a few key people in our business that if they came to me and said I'm going, I would need to sit down and work out a package for these guys to retain them. Mm -hmm. The other guys within the business, although they're all very important, they're not instrumental in running the, the business. Yeah. The business wouldn't suffer massively if mm, they weren't They could be there. replaced quite easily. Yeah. yeah, we could get them. Now, granted, through the tools, we've got some exceptionally skilled men in the tools, yeah. guys who I would not want to lose. We give them good terms, pay them well. We go on well, we've got a good rapport. I don't run the business with an iron fist. Mm. I try and get I try and get things across them. I don't, I've said it for years, I don't want to be the guy that's jumping out a hedge at half four to see who's still working. Yeah, I yeah. just don't. I just, uh, I don't think you get the best out of people. There's some people that will rinse it mm -hmm. and you can pick them out quite quick. And they're the ones that I can lean on them they're as long last. as they want. Mm -hmm. And then they'll bow out or I'll tell them it's time to go. Yeah. So I think uh, culture in business is critical. You'll know that yeah. with the, the business that you guys run. And I guess there's a lot of social events along with that business. But um, yeah, so so the business, it's, it's grown beyond where I had imagined it. it. Yeah. It, it, it would certainly get to. But I don't think it's unwarranted that we we really have one know, very hard for us. We're, yeah. we're flat to the mat, and we really don't. You know, I would say I, I'm probably a steady to eight hours a week. Yeah, you know, I'll do and doing that with a young family, plus so, three daughters, aye. plus your wife to keep happy as and, well. And Lauren, and, Lauren is very tolerant. Of yeah, very tolerant. You know, and, and we have had conversations as you will with your yeah. wife. You have heated conversations at time and you're trying to explain how did you how i find this interesting because we're both similar age as well and then obviously being more partners at more time how did you have the conversations early on when you knew your desire was to build something bigger or had a greater desire than a normal life how do you get your wife on board and make sure that she's going to be that one that's going to support growing that fucking empire yeah i think lauren's well she's she's always been very supportive mm. so I, th I don't it wasn't it wasn't a huge I think more of the challenges have arrived when the kids have arrived right because I think when it was Lauren and I Lauren was always busy with uni yeah. busy at That's school true. you know she, she's ambitious she was all yeah. she didn't just so when she started at school it wasn't just to be a teacher she was wanting to be a principal head teacher yeah. that was a goal so she was always working hard and doing extra yeah. work and mm -hmm. involved with classes and so it's not like she's sitting at home waiting on you while you're out working she was she's 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 hustling as well she yeah. was always working hard so i guess on that basis she used to take she's so Lauren's a soprano classically mm -hmm. trained singer and that's what she done at uni and then she she left and went back and done school teaching so she was always doing you know, stuff with singing with the mm. kids and taking on extra stuff. So it probably wasn't, it, it wasn't probably magnified as much until, until the weekends arrived. Mm -hmm. And then once they arrived, yeah, it, the the conversations have been, I feel like a single parent. Uh, you've got to fucking start taking a step back or at least be there and be there, be present. do things. And so that's yeah. something that we've realized. And I do still do, you know, you know, more hours than I should probably, than, well, way more than standard, but, We've got a good agreement that yeah. Lauren knows what I need and I know what she needs. Yeah. So as long as we're trying to do it, if she says to me, Scott, I want to do this on this day, mm -hmm. then that's I'm I'm yeah. making sure I'm there to make sure she can do her bit. And in turn, 
90 percent of the time my stuff is work yeah but i know that if i say to her this is i'm going to do this and this she'll say right that's, i'm not asking her permission she's not asking yeah. mine i'm she's just saying supporting each other and, yeah. and i think that's critical because yeah. i want to be the best version of me yeah and i want her to aye. be the best version of her man husband and father not yeah. just fucking we're not 50 50 yeah. we're 100 yeah, percent yeah, yeah and i think that and for the kids i've seen that with my mum and dad growing up yeah i'd see my mum and dad been affectionate and that's memories yeah. that are strong and stand with me Aye. so i want our kids to have that and yeah having three girls they're good fun but they're challenging at times but i wouldn't change it for the world yeah. but yeah you're when, you're the, what i always find as well and you'll see that you'll see this amplified up with three girls is you're constantly on stage, aren't you? You're that. You're their first imprint. You're their. You're more than them. What they see is a fucking man. That's it. And a lot of the things that I see in society now with young boys coming through is they're not fucking men. They're not treating women the way they should be treated, or Definitely. they're not acting a certain way. Um, and I feel so. And I, I kind of I look at you with a bit of reflection of myself, thinking, "Fuck me, your daughters are going to have a hard time when they grow up because they're going to look at here's what a man should be. Yeah, the strong, supportive." affection to my my mum looks after the family and is fucking very very present and yeah. day to day with them for me that's that's the foundations isn't mm. you know i don't so it's exactly that, that how i treat my wife is a reflection of the yeah. the partners i want my kids to have yeah absolutely. i want them to have a man that's there and does what he's right. meant to do and supports the family and i at times it's no easy but hey what's the alternative Aye. you know i'm no bowing out no exactly so we're Aye. here for it you know so I, there are times it's difficult did you ever have difficult conversations along what your about what lauren's expectations were of a of a marriage based on what her upbringing was because i always find that like the i suppose girls that come up with their mom and dad just working a traditional job where the dad's home every night yeah at five o'clock or the day of the weekend or he goes to the pub on a friday like that's kind of that set routine routine scottish that's fucking inside us all and obviously i know that you're not going to have that because the hours that you work and i work that uh did you have any conversations with that it was like no this is we're not gonna have a normal fucking life we're gonna have this life that's aye a wee bit out aye, of the norm i aye. guess lauren's mum was a teacher as well lauren's father was uh, hr for levi's so he was he didn't do standard hours he was right. he was away a lot they they concentrated concentrated a lot on holidays they had big holidays X amount of times mm. a year, and that was their real quality family time. Yeah. He was back at weekends, but he was paving away. Mm. He was, you know, there uh, they'll get a bay there from yeah. originally, and uh, then they moved out to Calern. So, yeah, I think her dad always done big hours as well. And it's quite interesting. Eh? Brian was the instrumental in me starting landscaping. Mm -hmm. I actually worked in their garden when I was sixteen for the guy in horticulture. Uh -huh. So we used to do local landscaping jobs, and Lauren was there with sister and I had a. Uh, I'm not a big football guy, but my dad was, and I had a Rangers jumper on. And I, Brian's a big Rangers man. Lauren and Brian were both season ticket holders right. at Ibrox, <laughs> and you just wouldn't think that. But I don't think it was football skill with Lauren. I think it was more the talent on the pitch. <laughs> But uh, so I had met Brian. So I think their their working life, although it wasn't maybe as busy as yeah, ours, yeah. reflects a little bit. It does mm. reflect on it. Uh, the, the big holidays, that kind of thing. Me growing up, that wasn't really a thing. We went or down to France a couple of times yeah. and uh, in the bus for Buchanan bus uh, station. So they were. But I wouldn't change it for the world. No, I had yeah. an amazing upbringing, and we'd I've got twenty eight co first cousins that live within about four miles. Uh, big so family. we were just always tearing about down the glen. Uh -huh. Just my grandpa was a tenant farmer. Latterly was a gardener, and uh, so he had a local farm. So we'd be away playing in the hay bales and turning yeah. about the field. So we had a brilliant upbringing and it was, there was no financial impact to it. It was just, uh, just good fun. Your kids don't relate yeah. fun to no. finance. No, they don't. If they don't. we go down the Glen and build burns, uh, build dams. They'll love that. You're uh, not spending a single penny, but I think most it. people think we need to go and, and chuck and money and at the kids to make them have a good time. No, you, you, know? you certainly don't. It's what yeah. we talked about when I just came yeah. in. It's, it's time with them, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Aye. It's, it's aye. getting the time with them. So, yeah, I guess we, we'd had a few conversations, but yeah, probably not anything too in depth. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty laid back and uh, yeah, I guess I am, I'm reasonably easy going at I am reasonably easy going. I like to kind of try to put a lighter spin on things. Yeah. There are things that are really important, which is health, my family. My dad checked out early through ill health, so I put a lot of importance on my health. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I guess Lauren and I, you know, 
over the years as the business has, has developed, she, she's more involved with the business now, so she mm. sees more about it. And Pro understands it now more. She definitely mm. does, aye, she yeah. definitely does. And I think before being a teacher, she was in, she was in it. So when we, we when we get the house we lived in just now, our mortgage was all based off her earnings, whereas I was yeah. earning about four times, but I was uh, self-employed, self so, so I'm a real risk. Yeah. And I can't get that. So I'm more reliable if I work for someone else. But if I work for myself and I'm in charge of my own destiny, Doesn't it? You're I'm seen as being, I just I can't uh, get that up. In my, but that that was the way of the world, and that's you know where we got to. I've got Nick Ponty ringing in my head right now, saying, "Fucking hell, we've been talking for thirty five minutes, and <laughs> we're not even spoken about property yet." So, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> the uh, so the business is doing well. The business is churning cash flow. What gave you the intention then to to get a property? What was the what was the motivations? Is it something you've always fancied doing eventually, or is it uh, something more recently? So it, it's always something I've been interested in. So when I was about 18, my nana had a flat and it was where you could buy it off the council. Yeah. So she said, my, my older brother, Gordon, he get first dibs at it because he was the oldest grandson. He said for years, I'll buy it, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. Long story short, it didn't happen. Nobody bought it. They passed away. We could have got that for 11 grand and it's now probably worth about 140. Uh -huh. So that stuck in my throat a bit. And uh I remember I was clearing out my mum's loft only about two weeks ago and I found a DVD, How to Be a Landlord, <laughs> that I had bought. I was actually meant to bring it with me. <laughs> but uh, So I've always been interested in it and I don't really know where that comes from. Mm. I don't know I don't know what the interest was. My mum and dad bought their council house in like the, it'll be late 80s, early yeah, 90s. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't really know where the property, where the interest in property came from, but it was something I was always interested any, in. Any business owners that you saw locally that, that you grew up maybe aspiring to be that owned the property as well? There is a guy in the village, but it's it's more commercial stuff, mm -hmm. uh, Dudley G. So his right. brother has a lot of property in Aberdeen. Apparently he's called Mr. Aberdeen. Right. G is his last name, and he's a lot of commercial property. Mm -hmm. So he was probably one of the only guys... Calern as a village is, is a pretty affluent area. Mm -hmm. So there a lot of guys locally that were, you know, big houses. Yeah. A lot of them were the gardens I was working in. Mm -hmm. You know, they big houses and a lot of dispensable income and nice cars. And so I don't know where the property thing really came from, but I guess from when I was 18 to when I got into the business and probably up to four, five years ago, a lot of the income I made I reinvested in the company yeah, heavily yeah. to buy all the machinery, scale the business. Mm. I think a lot of the time this today's world is instant gratification. Yeah. You work a week, you need to go away on holiday for a fortnight. Aye, cool. I worked for like nine years and we've done never, very little. Never took a holiday. Uh, Hardly done anything. Mm. Lauren and I would go away. You know, we would go away on a holiday in the summer, but we lived in a two bedroom cottage that was mm. repossessed and I'd done it up with a couple of our guys over about 10 months. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were prepared to put the work in, yeah. but, uh, all of them, are, the finances were always re reinvested into yeah. the business. And then when the kids come along, Lauren went down to part-time and then we didn't realise childcare was so expensive. <laughs> but it blew my mind because... Fucking a mortgage for each of them. Well, it is. <laughs> so, excuse me, I said to Lauren that I, when she fell pregnant with Georgia, our third girl, um, I said to Lauren, it's really school teaching is really not an option, is it? And she said it's not, but she says I, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to sit about. No. So I want to do something. And I said, well, how's about we look at property? And and where I was at, I had about a hundred grand saved, and I'm a big car guy. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get a nine eleven. Yeah. And then I have spent so much money in cars, doing them up, body kits, all that crap, and then just sell them for peanuts on what you put in them, like washers, <laughs> like I had a max power cover car, all that stuff. Mm. Bought it, spent. 10 on it, probably combined it cost me 20, sold it for six grand, <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> I said to Lon, yeah, I could get the car, it could sit out in the street, depreciate, mm. might get to drive it once a fortnight, or we, or we fire the money into property. So at Gumtree found a couple of flats in Falkirk, went to see the couple, they were just starting to exit their portfolio, they were wanting to sell a couple a year, and uh, it was just really traditional, mm -hmm. looked at them, agreed a price, both had sitting tenants, or one had a sitting tenant. We bought it, 25% deposit, and then went in, and about five months later, bought the other one, 
which has the same tenant that we bought it with, oh, nice. which is consequently way below market <laughs> value. Say, yeah. So it's we're, not, we're, nice to get that asset, but you want a bit churn now with well, the, way the, where the markets went. So, so I think well, that's one we'll need to have a chat about how we go, you know, whether we might move that on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was where we, we got to. So we, we put the money into into them just twenty five percent deposit, and then we got another one in uh, between Bears Den and Mary Hill, mm -hmm. a three bedroom, which is now an H. Well, the license is pending for an HMO, but we've got a good rental for it, a family that are staying in it, and then we got one through prime property auctions it was yeah. lewis lauren orchestrated this deal just off her own back mm -hmm. she'd got in touch or lewis had got in touch with her and then uh, so that was our first all money out so nice. that was when we start so so sorry the one that we bought through those guys was the first one that we used to be rrr strategy right i know so, not just packing the money into it and aye. leaving it yeah and we i didn't Is that because the funds were starting to run out then the, 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 the kind of the initial funny you had saved was like oh fuck, we just pumped this into the, the the properties how do we keep scaling this with it yeah, I think it was probably just try to gain a bit more knowledge. And mm -hmm. then that was, again, I mentioned Julian Erler. He was instrumental in me joining this as well. Yeah. So it was funny because I was looking at Julian and thinking, how many, how's he got, where are all these deals? <laughs> and then once I joined the group, and it's a group of really like-minded people who are all cheering each other on. Like, and fuck, they're everywhere. And then I knew him like, I've not got enough money to buy all these. <laughs> so it was a total, it was a total role reversal. But the, the BRR strategy works well yeah we converted a one bed to a two bed in newton mairns we get all money out plus i think it was seven grand Oofed. you yeah. know so it was an absolute we've not done one like that uh -huh. since uh but it's a good area as well for rent on isn't it it was really uh -huh. good i and uh i guess just getting in tow with the right people yeah. we use a uh, unit go financial <laughs> services and uh he's a uh, because he's doing it mm -hmm. It's good to speak to him because he's got a lot of different strategies and exit plans and yeah. stuff I would never really know. Whereas when you're opened up to this world, these loopholes are available or, or just trying to maximise the pot that you have. Yeah. Aye, not realising that 100 grand is just going to go into 425 Aye. grand deposits. Aye. That's exactly Aye. it. So it's just how to maximise the, the pot that you have, yeah. basically. So, yeah, we got involved with that. We done the, the BRR in Newton Mearns and then... After that, the fishery mm. deal come up. We had been we'd been two and a half years trying to negotiate this deal. So this was a real the the couple had separated and it was it was on the open market, it was off, it was on, it was off. I went in to approach her. She was quite direct when she says I've had ten time wasters down here, you know, try to buy it. I'd been looking for land, not at that scale, but I'd been looking for land for about twelve years. We'd offered in multiple pieces. Right. But, Just for the relocate the yard to the business there originally. Yeah. But it's kind of became a property investment though isn't it it's it, came, came a, a, a cracking deal isn't it it has but i think geographically where the business was based we we didn't have a huge area you know yeah i could have went and got a yard in canvas lang or rather glen or half an acre or something like I, but that all the men would have had to travel an extra 20 so we had a real niche area mm -hmm. and it just so happened that area is pretty hot property yeah so the 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 values and the people we were competing against one bit of land we offered on it was a guy that owns um, Optical Express. Got right. it. You know, so this, and listen, I'd do the same. And they're he, just looking to build massive houses on Oh, he it, just uh, blew us out of the water. Uh, he came in with an offer that was, I think, like double what everyone else offered. Mm. But if I had pockets that deep cash. and I wanted it, I'd, you'd pay it. Aye. I'd be doing aye. it. So that was the kind of people that were trying to compete against. Mm. So when the fishery deal came up, we had to. Uh, <clears throat> We really had to make sure we could get it over the line, mm. but there was a there was a, a lot of to and fro. The couple were separating. Yeah. It wasn't quite as straightforward as we'd like. What was that? Twenty eight? Did you say? A twenty uh, twenty seven. I think it is twenty seven. With so it's got the fishery in it as well. It's got the fishery in it. And three acres of water. And the cafe as well. Yep, there's a cafe there as well. And, and then the house. there's a house. So it, it was a five bed bungalow. Nice. Yeah. So probably. So what's the what's the the strategy for it then to utilize it for the business for the yard or some of the land? Yeah, are you developing out any of the rest there? Or? So our, our initial plan was buy it, pump the ponds out, and then because we're running a grab business, right, recycle some of the material and use the ponds as infill and just fill it in. That was our that was our strategy. Right, right. And then once we actually moved there, the locals would fucking lynch you. Well, I know that's the thing. <laughs> but once we actually moved there, we realized how. 
how beautiful it was. Uh, and I just didn't have that. And listen, hard to do it. earning a good living is important. Yeah. It's not the be all and end all uh, by any manner of means. The culture, yeah. the work environment, it, it's a lovely place to spend time. Yeah. So we quite quickly realised that that's not the strategy. And the house that we bought, we'd, it's, it's funny because the strategy we're buying flats and you know other houses to renovate is always below market value mm -hmm. we actually had to pay a premium to get this right. land and it was purely because of the landscaping because business so our strat we had three or four strategies mixed in yeah so what did what was what sorry <coughs> what did you end up buying it for then so financially yeah so the full land value is 950 right. with a house on it the existing owner still owns 25 percent so so we paid seven forty for seventy five percent of it. Right. He owns twenty five percent. We own a pocket of land outright, mm -hmm. four acres that we're going to put the a shed on, and that'll keep. I don't think our I think our working relationship from me and the previous owner we work together fine. Right. So He's, you're not you're not going to accept the rest of it from him then. Well, I don't know. That's yeah. really on him. So we got on fine. He is in the background. He's quite happy with yeah. that. He's early sixties. He has a plan to build a house in a section of land which is quite it's tucked away, so yeah, it won't impact on, it won't impact on the rest of us. And and whether that happens or not, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. But um the the house was there, it wasn't in great order. The, there was talk about renting it on its cottages or dot com or yeah. something. But realistic, there's no way you could let it. So you so you're refurbing that just now? <clears throat> so we we're, we're refurbing that now. We're putting an extension on it just now. Mm. There's a conservatory on it that was pretty short, so we had to rip that down, apply for planning. So yeah, we've we've pretty much ripped it inside out. It's it's turned from a five to a six bed. Nice. And we're going to put it out as SA. So are probably you're gonna hold the, the, the house in. So our plan to hold it is because we do have other development plans, mm. maybe pods on the land. Yeah, yeah. And what we don't want to do is sell it, someone else just buys it. it, and then they've got a say in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that we're going to let other place with pods. We're going to do it a handful, yeah. very sympathetically mm. and, and enhance the ground, but obviously we want to be able to generate some revenue. Yeah. So what do you think? What do you reckon the house will be worth once you've you've renovated it? I think it'll probably be worth about six fifty, maybe seven hundred. So you get the majority of the, the money back out. Or, or yeah, well we will value. from out. So so where we're at just now, when that house is fully renovated, including our deposit, mm. we're four hundred k into that deal. And you're going to refinance the property itself. House itself. I think we probably mm. will. I I think that's the plan. So we've landscaped it as well, obviously with the business we have, and we've landscaped it in such a way that the house will, over the next three or four years, become quite separate yeah. from the fishery. So it's it good income. Hedges in and shrubs in mm. and trees to just hem it in a wee yeah. bit. Whereas where it is just now, it's opened. It just sits up on the top of the hill. Right. And everyone can see it. So so that that is our goal. What what do you envision that would be a nightly rate on that then? A nightly rate. Yeah. So we're reckoning weekly rates. We right. maybe have a minimum three or four nights because it's six bed. Aye. We're reckoning weekly is about two to two and a half grand a week. Nice. Because we're reckoning it'll be fa Family, two, two big, families, big I think. families that'll come it'll to be it, two yeah. or big families yeah, that arrive. Yeah. The six bed thing is is pretty big. So we've got the garden. Not tie into the fishing, the fishery at all? It may do. I think we're Oops. in we're in Loch Lomond and Trossex, the national park. Right. So we're right on the John Muir Way. We're about a mile for the West Highland mm. Way. We're 25 minutes for Glasgow. 50 minutes for Edinburgh, 30 minutes for Stirling. Nice, aye. So, you know, yeah. uh, 15 minutes for Loch Lomond. You might get a fair, fair amount for... for yeah, so, uh, so I would hope people coming across from abroad. Yeah. But it, it's really... It was an asset within the purchase that we couldn't, one, move on, yeah. and we couldn't leave it as it was. Yeah. Because it wasn't in a fit state to rent. So to maximise that, yeah. So we really had to invest in it. And mm -hmm. I, if I'm being honest, it's it's more than what we anticipated. Yeah. It definitely is. So, and yeah. you're still enjoying the, you're still doing the reef a bit at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, we are, I. Yeah. So we're still, so the boys are just doing the block work off the founds for the extension today. Nice. And then we'll go on with the kit. So what do you think you'll end up spending on the on the house itself then? I think we'll be near 200 grand. Wow. It's a big reef up on that. It's huge, isn't it? But uh, it was, it was honestly, it was board, so bad. borderline shithole. It right. really was. I a borderline knocked down. Aye, aye. Uh, it was, aye, lights all ran with extension cables, no insulation, burst water pipes under the floors. Uh, and I, the, the previous owners, this wasn't instrumented by them. I think they just get trade guys in that they thought were doing a good job and they were actually just... Cowboys. Aye, so we've uh, got a good, reliable guy that we use and he does good work and we mm -hmm. trust him. So... It's definitely more than I wanted to spend on yeah. it by a by a, but this whole 
this whole site seems like it's going to be a bit of a lifestyle business for not only the it's going to tie the landscaping business into it, the Airbnb, the potential pods, the fishery, the cafe. It's almost going to be a family-run business located from this site. It definitely is. So long term, that's what we're looking to mm. do with it. The fishery as a business is okay, but it doesn't spin a lot of money. You've got right. three acres of water. Uh, the cafe does okay, but again, the business itself when we bought it was just non-existent. Yeah. They weren't really pushing it. So we're trying to develop that as yeah. well. And there's quite a lot of passing trade. They just need to know we're there. So yeah. we're trying to enhance the the kind of impact or the the front of the business from the roadside, you mm -hmm. know, to try and bring people in. So long term, we are going to invest in it. For me, it's a real double-edged sword yeah. between pushing on with a private portfolio with properties mm -hmm. Or is it all in on the pods? Yeah. And I just... Well, I suppose it's, the, it's, just a, it's just a property strategy though, isn't it? It definitely Aye. is. So realistic, I think a lot of the landscaping profit will move in to develop, develop the fishery, it. build the pods, mm -hmm. and then Lauren and I will continue to invest in properties personally. Well, yeah. it's, it's in our business, it's McCall Properties, yeah, yeah. but it's... Uh, we'll, we'll continue to invest in that Re personally. Reinvest the profits, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and is the... Land, the landscape business being relocated to the site already then? It has, I So that so was actually relocated before we get the deal over right, the line because our last so, office... So that's been of added value to your business. It definitely has. I, I mean, you'd have to spend, what, a few hundred grand on a site to buy a site anyway? Well, that's it. And now you've got all, you've got fucking 20 odd acres now here. Eh? Well, the plan is that we'll move up the back. So where the where the yard is just now is down near the car park. Mm. So landscaping, diggers, HGVs, fishing. It doesn't maybe go high than yet. So we've got a bit up the back where we can go and get out the road. But that's... Right. That's going to be a wee bit away just financially because of you know what we've spent in the house and at least you've got the capabilities to do all this work and you know it's not like you have to go and hire in diggers machines and then go and oh, date. Yeah. you've got the boys you've got the team you've got the business that can support this we definitely have Especially and the, the pods the, as well yeah the guys are there today and I the pods we'll be able to do all them uh, ourselves as well so keeping it in house is critical yeah. and it's good for you know we're obviously working outside so you get wet months and winter can be a wee bit quieter so having mm. that as a bit of a fail safe. You know, to let the guys fall back on that. Aye, it's aye. actually been quite good over this winter as well. Aye, so they're adding value to the other business, through your other business, through your, through your, your main business, yeah. Aye, so we're able to move the labour mm. about according to what we're needing to do. That's it. That's so, that must be quite handy. It definitely mm. is. It definitely is. We'd either be out earning money on the jobs, but then it's a longer term strategy, aye, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah it, it does seem to work well. I suppose the fact that the kids are seeing this as well, like Lauren being involved and the, the, the potential of the plans of the pods, the house getting done, like this is this is something they're going to grow up seeing. It definitely is. And yeah. it's not something we've been hugely involved with, but I'm keen for the kids to be involved. Robin and Megan actually work a Saturday afternoon in the cafe. Nice. So they work three to, uh, two to five. Fucking slave driver. But on, it was, it was, <laughs> Seven year old. <laughs> it, was, it was driven by them. They was wanted it? to do it. Robin said, Robin's a bit like me. She wants to earn a bit of money. And That's Megan crazy. is as well. So, and they're great, but... That's uh, interesting, eh? Megan worked for two hours. We agreed Rob was trying to haggle me for an early rate. <laughs> and uh, I said, well, what do you think you're worth? And she said, well, um, what about £3 an hour, Dad? And I said, what about £2 an hour? And she said, OK, deal. And I said, no, what you need to do is you need to come back at me and then we'll settle on a bigger number. You can't just agree to the first thing I say. Mm -hmm. So we agreed in 250 but they were what they get like 19 quid taps. Because <clears throat> they're only wee, a wee, bit wee. Oh, they're just wee boppers yeah, right. giving out crisps and doing brushing up the floor. But I think that's great for them. Oh, yeah, and the see. fact they wanted to do that. Yeah. And, and one thing I have it's noticed, not getting driven by you for something day. This is them. Yeah. yeah. I think, and we will keep the kids involved with the business because mm. one thing I have noticed when I go and look at maybe we go and see properties or or if we're going to tender for work for landscaping businesses, a lot of bigger families or certainly families with a bit more wealth. Uh, their kids are always in the mix. Yeah, they're always there, even if they're young. They never put them in another room. Mm -hmm. They're always in when you're doing the negotiations, and I think that's instrumental to let them see how these things are done from an early age. So I'm keen when the builders are there, the plumbers are there, the kids are in. It's it's interesting you say that. I've been having conversations with Sam in office because he holds a degree as such a fucking high regard. And obviously, I lasted six months. I was very much like you, as much as I can be academic and apply myself. Yeah. It, didn't, it wasn't interesting to me. Um, but I had this conversation with him a couple of days ago and I said, you know what? If you know, we're talking about someone with a degree that he kept fucking, you know, bigging down, oh, it's got this degree, got this degree. And I says, Do you know what? You can walk in your degree, they can walk in with a degree, we can go out and do some business. And I'm fucking walking out with it. I'll Aye. walk out with the contact, I'll walk out with the contract, I'll walk out with the deal. I goes, and it's not my degree. Aye. I goes, it's people skills, it's sitting down and having a conversation. And if that's the route that your your kids you want your kids to go down, it doesn't really matter what they do, is if they can 
whole conversation with people and you know on different levels negotiate just be that people person that's more oh. a much more valuable skill set than what paper they've got behind them it definitely is there's a people do business with other people yeah businesses don't do business you always find a connect within a company Aye. and see if that connect goes you the working relationship that. follows them mm-hmm. to where they go next and i think that's critical bringing yeah. the kids you know a guy said to me in the gym the other day it's always so nice your kids they always talk Aye. I said, but so they should. They should be able to look you in the eye. Yeah. They should be able to say hello. Yeah. They should be able to say thank you when they leave. Not the high kids, <laughs> Well, kids and adults, yeah. and I see leaving the gym, and they never even lift their head to the people yeah. behind the counter. I just think that's... Caught, you know, having good manners doesn't cost a penny. No, no. And I think it's, but then it's like they're getting bred up and getting pumped in front of an iPad, and we know we spoke about it before, it's like easy parenting as well now, because is. your kids just... I got that bit of conversation and confidence in them to actually be around people and yeah I, I, they must have confidence to be around and, and work in the cafe at seven and eight year old like just to go and be around people and well that's serve definitely them. karina that works in the cafe is an absolute gem and yeah. she's a real character and she's a she's the heart and soul of that place mm. and the kids she's just she's very caring and yeah. the kids just warm to her so they like being with her she likes being with them and everyone's winning out that's and, good. and they get to communicate with just people that arrive yeah. into the cafe and yeah. what would you like and what can we get you and I think all that stuff's great for kids I really do Perfectly. Yeah, it definitely is so do you think the portfolio growth will be paused at the moment will you focus on this uh, no so we've, we've actually got four going through the now so <laughs> aye we've got four down and so Carlisle Derby Sunderland and Newcastle nice that's the one that Christopher Dale this is through yeah. Christopher yeah. Dale so I went to see him through you and uh, Dudden and a uh, I just went to one of his podcast or he'd like an event on yeah. in Newcastle, got a quick chat with him and then he started posting deals. I went down about two weeks ago to see him and I'm going down in about four weeks to see him again. Nice. So two of them are just in the midst of going through, the other two will be through in the next two or three weeks. BRs. Uh, so there's an SA, an HMO. <coughs> nice, that's good to diversify, eh? A BRR. And then there's a buy to let as well. Stuff that's not going to tap too much cash then, or are you, is that the strategy? I think probably over the four, I think we'll maybe need to leave about 90 grand in them. Right, right. But the, the returns are pretty good. Yeah. So there's an there's an HMO that's th- that's going to Mears. And then there's, again, the community thing with this as well. Mm. And then you need to know you fire it up and then away these guys go. <laughs> or women, ask you, yeah. And there's... Loads of folk today. It was it's the first thing in the morning. Like, I need to get off this chat because I need to go on with my work. <laughs> but me. there's there's so much wealth there that uh, you, you're a bit. It's a good support network. So I would you're you're less reluctant to get involved in deals because you know so many people that can give you strategies to work your way around yeah. them from you and Sam uh, and the girls in the office and Tracy that manages projects and then the wider team with the financial guys. and I, I quite like the, uh, I actually really like the health and wellbeing chat and the, and the car chat. Like I just think that there's so much diversified like split groups where you've almost got this community of things that you know guys were asking about commercial vehicles to put through the, the, the car oh, yeah. tax efficiency or, or then any, any, what cars you can get away with. It's fun cars and stuff. So I, I think, think there's it's like-minded people, mm, isn't it? Yeah. And what I was saying earlier about running a business, it can be pretty lonely at times yeah. when you find a load of like-minded people. So I don't really want to go and talk about what's going on with the footballer. I like Aye. boxing. I like UFC. Aye. That's my sports. I used to do a bit of boxing when I was younger, but the... The, sh- the normal pub chat. Or Aye. Like just... I like talking about business. I like yeah. the process of business. So in turn, you've got a lot of common ground with these mm-hmm. people and they're all women and men who are trying to progress and yeah. do better and, and build each other up. So for a community, when you're saying yeah. about, I always like when the wee red icon comes up and it's the motor, because I know if people are talking Tell about the cars, cars like, and yes. I'm an absolute petrol head. Uh, so if anything comes up, I'm, and I know we've got some events coming up with go-karting and stuff, yeah. and possible road trips in the North Coast. So all that stuff. So if your, friend, if your current friend group don't have the finances to do it, you going to span your own? No, exactly. You're going with a group. There, uh, you're, you're probably not going. Aye. But now you're in a group. You're going yeah. with a lot of like-minded people who just so happen have, have the finance to be able yeah. to do it, and you can go and enjoy it as a so, group. It wasn't. It wasn't even as some for me. It was the the finance. It was more the flexibility in their business life or their portfolio. Yeah. Like I remember Nick slagging us off, going, "Oh, it's just all the fancy cars going up and driving in Scotland." It was like, no, because John Morris came with his fucking branded. What was it, Renault fucking, his prime like property auction or something? Was uh, it? I think I he was like half behind us all the time, but he just loved it for the, the community and the network and sitting yeah. up in the bevy and, and chatting with all the guys. And uh, it's just relationships, isn't it? 
I think that I think, and that's something I don't know if that was your target when you started the business, but I said if it's not, it's certainly a really mm. good byproduct. Having that network and the support group and all these yeah. common groups, and it's all as you say, the health and well being. It's all stuff that's good for us. Aye. You know, we're, we're not wanting to be sitting watching no. Netflix eating Pringles. Yeah. I do a bit of cold water stuff, so you want to be out in the ponds and up the loch and walking uphill and. You know, you want to challenge yourself. Aye. You want to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. And then when things arrive that are not that easy to deal with, it's just part of the deal. Yeah. I'm, I've built myself, I've got the armour to deal with, mm -hmm. so I'm going to get on with it. You know, and it is, I say that the problem's not the problem. It's how you react to the problem that's yeah. the problem. And it's so true. It's, it's something's only the meaning that you give it, isn't it? It's not. It definitely you know, it's, is. You get the same, two, two people could react completely different to the same problem. Yeah. That's who's going to go forward with it. I know, and we say it in the office often, we're in the solutions game. Yeah. I'm not in the problem game. Yeah. Because the problems are everywhere if you want to look for them. I think that's the thing about property and business in general is, is it's going to hit you daily with problems. It's how you find these solutions around it. And and I suppose that's where all businesses are, are alike, isn't it? It is. And as you said, it's your perception of a problem. Mm. You know, what I see as a problem is health, my family, yeah. their problems. Sure, you can't control A burst that, pipe. Yeah. It's a burst pipe. It's yeah. no ideal but it's not a problem. Yeah. You know, and I guess it's just the size of the problem is the size of the man. Mm -hmm. We've been getting hit with maintenance issues fucking heavy the, the, the last few weeks in the portfolio, like heavy. And it's funny because like, like I say, there's nothing to control. There are problems and you just need to find solutions around it and, and get around it. Um, but I remember looking at the spittle bomb we did a bit of roof repair done and I saw like the, the cost of scaffolding and shit and I'm like, do you know what? You might as well, for the cost of hiring that, for having this, property for 25 30 years i'm going to have it for it. i might as well just go and either re-roof it or <clears throat> just go and buy a fucking scaffolding and build something on the site that can house a scaffolding Aye. so you're looking at a cost like that going that's a solution to the problem rather than hiring four or five grand for scaffolding again next year or two years time sure buy it put the cost out bring out, it within the once. business and you're kind of you know when it was like beating after beating the other week it was like fucking hell like what's what's next then i remember just driving past this commercial building this office building and it, it was six stories of scaffolding must have been about 100 meters long around the corner i thought that's a fucking problem. Like uh, I'm worried about my or my five grand uh, rental for the scaffold and thinking I'm going to hate to buy it and do X, Y, and Z. But it's like there's just layers to problems in it, and it's the more you grow, the bigger your problems are going to get. And you just well, have to accept are. that you've got to grow the size of your problems, don't you? And I guess you look at the asset you've got. So Aye. what would be a bigger problem? You know, having spittle, Aye, not having it. That would be a problem. I know cash. But the fact you've got to pay for the scaffold to yeah. repair the roof for the properties you've got that bring you cash flow so talking about the run you've got to you, you yeah. get to oh you uh, get to, get to it's the uh, difference between to. having to and getting yeah. to yeah you get to be able to do that change that language yeah it definitely is i and i think yeah these problems will always arrive yeah but yeah as long as the family's okay they're healthy Aye. then the rest of it we can deal with Everyone else can deal with it, absolutely you know and it's good problems to have yeah you know because the alternative is you're not Try to okay. progress. You're not progress, you know. not growing. Is that is that what thrives you? Then is that what the future kind of holds for you? Just constantly growing and. I think so. I think this year coming twenty twenty four. I think we're just going to maybe try and refine the process a mm. wee bit. We're not too. It's not too important to grow this year. Mm. There definitely is a shift in the economy. Yeah. There is a downturn in work. Interest rates been up. Dispensable mm. income. It is still early in the year, but we're definitely not as busy as we mm. have been at this time of year. We're coming out the back of two or three years oh, that we're, ex you know, huge in incredibly mm. busy. But generally, we run kind of three months ahead of yeah. our sale and our schedule, and we're not quite as busy as mm. we'd like to be. So, yeah, we'll probably just refine things mm. this year. I'm quite comfortable where the business has got. Yeah. We've got a good structure. We've got a good team of men. I don't get the impression any of them are running away anytime mm. soon. So I'm keen probably just to kind of home in on that. And we'd say we've been up to the high thirties, early forties mm. with the team, and it's it's haywire at yeah. times. So I think if we can manage what we've got, it, it concentrate on the profit and do that well, then I think although I'm okay with dealing with mm. problems, I'm not wanting to invite them in. Yeah, yeah. So that, it's interesting you're thinking the same as well. Like the kind of the, you know everything that goes up must come down, and we've, we've probably been in that up period for the last ten. 11 years and but and and, and and accelerated a lot the last few years that yeah. something's going to have to happen and it's, it looks it's, like it's, it's got to level out yeah. so we need to be mindful of that yeah. and cash flow in the business is critical it's a huge part yeah. of my job is just monitoring mm. what we've got what we've got to spend how do you deal with the stress of the cash flow of the business because i mean 30 guys all these <laughs> machines going in and out that must be a fucking headache dealing with that it's a uh, 
So the, again, it's the people, it's the infrastructure, mm. it's the folk you put around you. So we've got reasonably good systems and it doesn't, we always try and keep reasonably good cash flow within mm. the company. It's probably part of the reason why I've not been too lavish in a lifestyle. Yeah. And I'm not saying we've, we've got bags of money, but a clear conscience is a soft pillow. Yeah. So I like to sleep easy. <laughs> so I think for me, having reasonable cash reserves makes when these challenging times come along it makes it a wee bit easier to ride it out because you're not i'm not thinking i can't pay that bill next week because that'll put me into the overdraft we have got reserves there so got cushions probably that cushion is something that it just makes it easier for me to manage what you're saying about the stress of dealing with if i was right on the wire I don't. I you wouldn't be able to perform. I wouldn't wouldn't be doing it. I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why the the kind of development of the business has been so linear. Yeah, we weren't keen to take on. You know, we took a big project on in twenty nineteen, the St James Mm Centre in Edinburgh, our first big commercial job, and that was a fixed price contract and COVID ripped right through the middle of it. We were still working on it in twenty twenty three, to costs we'd submitted in twenty eighteen. Shit. So that was a so see if we didn't have good reserves, yeah. we could have been in real difficulty there. Mm-hmm. And dealing with a tier one contractor as well, these guys like to get their pound of flesh. Aye. You know, so it's a uh, yeah, having good reserves in a business is critical. Mm. But then it's managing that with what you want to reinvest. Yeah. And you know, it's trying and, and get the new car and move house and <laughs> you know, it's trying get, to get just the, get the holidays you need. Aye, and it's just yeah. trying to manage it, you yeah. know. But as I said earlier, I'm very grateful for where I am. Mm. And I think the the coming years, you know, I'm we've we've got four properties just now. My goal this year is to try and get us to twenty mm-hmm. with, a, with our own portfolio. And <laughs> Do you feel that takes the pressure off you a little bit with the stress <clears throat> of the business, knowing that if you've diversified the income, it's not just relying on the contracts and the, the landscape businesses also. There's a property portfolio, there's SA, there's HMOs. Do you think yeah, that? I don't, I don't, no, I don't really relate it to that. No? What, what I was trying to do is just, I had money sitting that I'd earned and, yeah. and it was just sitting and it, it, 100 grand was worth 90 next year. Aye. So I just wanted to get it into something that would grow, grow mm. and, and generate as a wee bit of income help out for the kids yeah. when they're longer. And yeah, ultimately, probably further down the line, it will make our lifestyle. But I'm, I'm not looking for it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm okay to start investing four years ago and we maybe see the real fruits of that in maybe 10 years. Ten years uh, you know, I, I'm okay with that. I yeah. don't... The, the income that we... That we, I can produce from the landscaping is enough to sustain mm. or to keep us in a comfortable lifestyle. Yeah. And... And I'm not want. I don't want to bring all the money or the money that we're making through the property, and just everything we earn through the property just gets recycled. Mm. And once we build it up, we're into something else. So, yeah. and I think that's quite a good way to be. That I'm. Yeah, I you think know, so too. The car thing is important mm. to me, but it's not the. You know, I said once the properties earn enough money to pay for a nine eleven, mm. I'll get it. It's way by that. It's, uh, you, still it. you won't fucking do it. Still not got it because uh, I'm in the process and I like the growth process. and enjoying the join the hustle of the growth. Uh, yeah, and and I, yeah. and I will get it, but it's uh, yeah. I guess what I was saying earlier about living in it's a reasonably affluent area. Clare, growing up, yeah. there was a lot of big businessmen in the area. One wee story I was actually going to tell quickly was it's probably on reflection. So my dad been a gardener. He was Arnold Clark's gardener for like thirty right. odd years, and I bought my first car from Arnold Clark and. At the time, he said to my dad, just tell Scott to come down to the house and we'll do the finance. So I was nearly 18 at the time, and I, I was I was grateful that he'd done it, mm. but I probably didn't reflect on it more or until I was running my own business. So this was a guy that would maybe have been late 50s, early 60s, mm. had thousands of employees UK-wide. They'd be turning over hundreds of millions, mm-hmm. and this guy's taking an hour out his evening. So to sign, a, to... sign a finance deal with me. Mm-hmm. It was meant to be two ten a month for my Corsa. He got it down to one ninety six, and he said that's psychological, Scott. We want to get you below the two hundred mark, mm-hmm. and I was very grateful. But actually reflecting on that, I run a business with thirty people. Am I going to give an hour out of my night to somebody that's going to come in and buy okay. something? You know, that. probably not. But then I think, where, where does that hunger come from? Mm. At that age, running that size of business. To give me that time, I yeah. just I think that's remar- and I think that's a testament to why I don't quote me, but I think they're the biggest independent car dealer in Europe. Yeah, and they started from one garage in the West End of Glasgow. 
So probably seeing these guys in the village and our, our business is absolutely minuscule in comparison yeah, yeah. to that. But seeing these guys with that kind of drive, probably, mm. probably subconsciously wear rubs off on you. But yeah. No, that's good, mate. That's a really good story ending, actually. Yeah. Now, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time to chat. Likewise, myself, I th thanks for that. Uh, really good, mate. Where can people reach out and follow your journey? Uh, so, McCall Properties is the is a property business. That's so Lauren is she's more the front of that than I am. Uh, and then the landscape is McCall and Stokes Landscape, and uh, Matt Grab is a business. My personal Instagram, I'm all right with that. <laughs> so, no, nice, mate. I appreciate that. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Cheers. Stephen. Thanks. Cheers.